when you look at what we're really doing here, it's not about painting paintings. This is not art in the normal sense of the word. We're not painting paintings. We're here to take a journey. And everyone's journey is going to go in a very different direction. So you're listening to a different criterion. If you're taking a journey, you're listening to something other than what you would listen to if you wanted a finished product. You're listening to those quiet voices that come, that, that, that direct you in places that's not about looking good, not about making a statement, not about trying to achieve something. It's, it's a whole stepping into this unknown. It's so unusual to be with a group where you're not in some way compared, where, where there isn't some criterion by which you, you judge whether you're doing it well or not. You can go to the table and for some crazy reason you're attracted to the red. Your whole vision said do it, so you do the red up there and you don't know where it's going and the painting seems to be getting out of control and you might think it's getting too chaotic and maybe you should bring it back un under wraps, you know. But if you listen again to your body, you walk to the table and now you're delighted by that pink, but you hate pink, you know. <laughs> It's so, you know, it's so, it's so wussy, pink, I mean, you know, God, pink. But anyway, you dare to take the pink, it said pink, okay. And all of a sudden, the pink turns into a person. But, and the more you paint on it, oh my gosh, it's not a person at all, it's a baby. But, uh-oh, I do not want my baby issues coming up here, you know. <laughs> But you're listening to your body, and that's what happened. The baby appeared, and, and then you might have a conversation with me, and I'll say, it doesn't mean anything. We're not, we're not going to define a new problem that you've got in your life because you painted a baby. It's just a baby, you know. Your job is to get out of your own way. Your job is to let that voice screaming over your shoulder saying, no, should be... Forget, uh, censor that, you've already done it, it's not original, uh, it's not as good as the person next to me, all of that is to uh, turn down the volume and keep moving. The most important thing is to keep moving. This work is like meditation in that sense. You're left alone with, with your mind and you see that it, it, it's all coming from you, it's all self-generated. My mind is very loud, you know, and I think that, I think that happens for everyone because there's no, there aren't any other voices interfering. There's no one else telling you what's right or how to do it or you're doing it wrong or you know you should be doing this. There's no one else saying that. It's only me saying that to myself. And um, I can really do whatever I want. I really can. <laughs> um, no one's going to tell me that, that I can't do it except myself. So if I'm not telling myself that I can't do it, then I can do it. So I've had these um, euphoric periods of um, of complete freedom. What if there was something quite bold? But that would ruin the picture. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I for no, that was a setup. <coughs> I just wanted to see his eyeballs go. <laughs> the, the judge, the, the critic, is really internal. It's not, you know, once we remove all the projections outside, so it's not going to be about measuring the painting, then, she, then you get to see, oh, it's really, a, it's really me doing it. And so the painting then becomes a mirror, becomes a very powerful uh, metaphor for your life, so to speak, where you see where you stop, where you say no, where you hold back, where you censor, where you don't listen to your intuition, or where you're willing to say yes. When you say yes to what arises and you're not trying to control, uh, there's more energy. You feel in contact. You feel, you feel on fire. You could afford to do huge risks. You could afford to try uh, to paint things that you think you could never do. Each step that you take in your own, uh, with your own courage and your own daring and your own audacity leads you to a bigger space. And so every time you do that, you end up in a bigger space. You know what's interesting here is I'm getting into solids. You know what that's right, that's right. I had a need 
Yeah. To feel this like it's soft. Yeah. That's, that's feeling really good to do that red. It's really good. Yeah. And I'm yeah. going to do this here with blue. And All right. Blue in. Yeah. I just really had a moment when I thought, if I were a kid, I would be wanting to paint skeletons. Yes. So I think I'll paint a skeleton. <laughs> and I think I want it flying from the sky. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. That's pretty cool. Yes. Could do me grabbing on from the back side. Yes. So you see my hands yes. and my legs. Yes. Where's your head? And my face. Right yeah, there. Over there. Yes. And I'm sort of like, yeah. Like, hold on. Like that. Yeah. What you listen to as you're painting is really that thirst. It's calling you. And uh, it's, it's asking you to take that step where you're, where you're really not going to be in control. You might feel angry. You might feel, uh, you might feel sadness arise. Sometimes tears come up. That's fine. You don't have to know what you're feeling in order to paint, but everything that is happening in you on that interior level has has the has an opportunity to come out through the brush. The brush is powerful enough to handle everything going on inside of you. It was like this alchemy. It was something happened. It was like this pedantic piece, this embarrassingly juvenile piece, started to just turn. It was so powerful to me to see before my eyes the truth of something that I believed is possible, but I've never gotten it directly in my writing. I've never allowed myself to go that far. I would really like to destroy my face. We're not going to touch that face. We're <laughs> no. going to leave that face. I feel like, like an egg. You know, I could walk around like this perfect little egg, right? It's unblemished, but also untouched. I feel like I want to be cracked open. I want to let whatever is incubating inside of that egg to come out. And every time I paint, this journey continues. And I feel like now I'm in completely new terrain. I don't feel like I have to know. I don't feel like I have to be perfect. Um, I feel free to explore. I feel like I can make mistakes. The masks that I previously held about this is the face I present to the world are starting to drop, and I feel free. I love not knowing what's behind everyone's painting. I mean, in a way, that just gives it so much more depth. There's so much more there than, than I could talk about if I told what I think is the story behind it. I mean, we just we don't know. There's the respect for the mystery. And I love that I, I've gotten to know people through this work, just through their images. And you know, I might not even know their names, but I feel this profound connection with people after painting with them. And we're all, we're all in our own individual journey, but we're also all supporting each other and holding the space for each other. When somebody starts to talk to me about, oh, their job sucking, or they just, you know, are just at such a dead end and they don't know what to do and they're so exhausted, I just love talking to them and encouraging them to, to try this, to try deeply diving into their own experience and really feeling the heart of that rather than always pushing it away or thinking, you know, oh, I'll just finish the next project and then everything will be okay. But to find a place in their own lives where they can wholeheartedly embrace themselves. There's a thirst that we have. If we're not challenged, there's something in us that isn't utilized and there's something that doesn't come alive and there's something that's not activated if we're not uh, putting everything at stake. So there's different ways of doing that, but this is a fairly safe way. It's just a piece of paper. And, and yet, the interesting thing is it feels like at certain moments everything's at stake. What, what's at stake? 